Hey everyone, how you guys doing? All right, my name is Greg Kapitsov. I'm a software engineer here at Proof. Really, really happy to uh, see a whole ton of faces in here. Really glad that you guys can make it through the heat. And um, today, you can see on the screen, we will be talking about Puppeteer, specifically serverless Puppeteer for fun and profit. I can guarantee the fun, but I cannot guarantee the profit. That's up to you guys. So, just to break it down, this is what we'll be doing together today. We're gonna to go over what is Puppeteer. Just out of curiosity, to show of hands, who's heard of Puppeteer before? Okay, so I don't even know why I'm up here. But we'll be going over what you can do with it. Some of those are web scraping, taking automated screenshots, testing, Honestly, whatever else you think of, it's a very, very powerful library. And towards the end, we'll get into how to actually run Puppeteer serverlessly, or in the cloud, as they say, which is interesting because at the core of Puppeteer is Chromium, which is Chrome. It can get a little bit challenging sometimes to run that in the cloud versus your local machine. Okay, so for those of you that did not raise your hand and have not heard of Puppeteer prior, officially, Puppeteer is a node library which provides a high-level API to control Chrome or Chromium or the DevTools protocol. It runs headless by default, and it can be configured to run with a head or headful. What headless here means, essentially, is there's no graphic user interface. So this is an API that you can easily control, you just, you just have, have somewhere, somewhere running in the background, one thread or any threads, doing whatever you want to program it to do. So a browser that robots can control, that you control. So the first thing that I want to dig into, um, do a little bit of overview and then show you guys an example, I'm a big fan of live demos, which always work out, right? Oh, sure. Is that better? Oh, yeah. OK. So um, one of the great things about Puppeteer, web scraping is obviously not new. There's a ton of different libraries that you can use to scrape the internet. But single page applications are notoriously difficult to scrape with traditional web scraping tools. There's scripts that don't load. There's content that doesn't show up. There's APIs that we just can't wait to get data for. Puppeteer makes that really, really easy. Uh, Puppeteer lets you run and inject scripts on the page that you're scraping. So if there's some reason they need to manipulate it or want to manipulate another website that Chrome is looking at, you can easily do that. that. Puppeteer lets, lets you programmatically click, type, drag, and honestly, just about anything you want. Um, that link is to the API reference, and there are a whole lot of functions. So let's take a look at some examples of Web scraping. Can everyone kind of sort of see the code on TVs or is it too small? Okay. So all of this will also be available in a repo that I have a link to in the slides. So if you guys can't see the code, just kind of roll with it and uh, you can check it out later if you're curious. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, really, really simple and you can do this with traditional scraping tools, but we're going to go to Use that white combinator. I'm a big fan of Hacker News. And we're just going to grab all the titles of all the latest articles. We're going to print them out here in the console. So that's where we'll be looking for output in this particular case. As far as the code specifically, it's really short considering what we're doing. Uh, we're just spinning up an instance of Chromium in the background. We're telling it to go to a page. The really great part we're telling it to wait until the network is idle. So Chromium will go to a page and wait until all the scripts have loaded, until everything's done loading. This makes it so easy to scrape single page applications. Then we're just evaluating a query selector against the document inside of the page. We're just going to log the articles that we get out of it. So let's take a look at what's on HN right now. Refresh. Number one, a janitor at Frito Lay invented flaming hot Cheetos. All right. Just going to run our script. Okay. 
And we just got in our console all the titles, the first one of which is a janitor interlay and that's a flame and hot Cheetos. This is a cool, but this is boring. You can do some other tools. This is just a start. So we're gonna go to the second example, which is a little bit more interesting. We're still going on the same website. We're still gonna to go to Hackadoos. But we're going to grab all the links to the articles and we're gonna open a bunch of tabs and we're gonna take a screenshot of every website that the article is linked to. And we're gonna do this in just a few more lines of code pretty quickly and pretty easily. We're gonna take those screenshots, we're gonna drop them in the screenshots folder that I have over here. Let's do it. <laughs> That's funny, just hacker news. I figure it can't be that bad, right? So we're going to kick that off and oh, starting to get some screenshots in. This is an Ask HN. So this guy. Yeah. Is that better? <laughs> Probably worse, right? Sorry. Yeah, and again, uh, this is all available on um, GitHub. There's a link to it, so the examples are ready to roll. So let's see what we got. Challenge is a shared library environment, screenshot of that site, whatever that is. Another screenshot. Ooh, did anybody read that Facebook moderator article? That was our work. Got a screenshot of that. Facebook crypto. Please don't use it. Okay, but well, we get the point, right? So, really, with just a few lines of code, we're able to go out there very, very quickly, go and generate screenshots of these websites, so it rendered well. Pretty fun. Now, I also wanted to highlight the single page application part of what puppets here can do. And uh, this is a fun little exercise here where we're going to see what the top few Google suggestions are depending on what we type in the query. So it's really easy to go on and scrape Google search results with just about any other tool. But most tools won't be able to actually look at the autocomplete search suggestions that Google's going to have for you. So let's have some fun with this. Um, Yeah, there's really not much to code here. We're doing a lot of the same, a lot of the same stuff. We're configuring it to run headless. We're popping up a browser. We're going to Google, waiting until the network is idle. We are going to type into the input. This is one of the really cool things a puppeteer can do. You can type into an input control, click input controls, add input controls. We're going to wait a little bit, and then we're going to evaluate the suggestions that come out of that. So let's give it a go. Our first query is going to be, where is my space? So let's see what people are asking today. We've got, where is my phone? Where is my mind? Where's my appendix? Where's my Android? Hmm, that's oddly specific. Um, let's see. Let's try. Why is my could be a good one. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry. <laughs> man, there's actually a lot about dogs here. That's weird. Must be a rough season to be a canine. Anyway, um, the other thing that I want to just show you here quickly is we can toggle between headless mode and headful mode. So right now we're headless, which means that Chrome is right in the background. But if we're debugging, we want to see what's going on, we can actually run in headful mode. So you can watch what this is doing. And you can set slow-mo on, which I am going to set here. But this is actually doing just slowing down every action by 550 milliseconds. because It's happening really quickly. You guys will probably miss it. But we're gonna do one more query. Anything from the crowd? Which we, which we see? Which we ask Google? Why are? Why are? Okay, <laughs> I like it. Why are? No. Okay. 
Don't look. Happens very quickly, hard in my desktop. But as you saw, browser pops open, input is put into the search info box, quickly do a query selector on the document, grab the job objects, grab the text content. And to answer the question, why are the flags at half staff? Are they? Why are you running? Why are you like this? <laughs> why are my feet swollen? Okay. So that was a little bit of web scraping. Uh, obviously, just an intro. Again, all this code is available to you guys. Um, Puppeteer can do so, so much more than this. And it's all Node.js. It's all promise-based. It's an ES6 library. So you can honestly have a lot, a lot of fun with this. But let's keep moving. Um, so the next thing that we want to talk about is testing. Puppeteer is really, really great for testing your front-end applications. A lot of us work on SPAs now. You can test static sites, but kind of overkill. But uh, making really good automated integration tests for a complex single-page application can be kind of challenging, kind of challenging to the point where you just don't do it. And uh, I personally like this a lot, but I know for myself, tests are hard to write. I'm not gonna write tests. When I don't write tests, life sucks. So I wanna talk a little bit about how to use Puppeteer with Jest. Jest is a really popular testing framework. I'm sure just about everybody's heard of it. And uh, Jest Puppeteer doesn't do anything that you can't do yourself. If you wanted to manually uh, pull up and tear down Puppeteer inside your own Jest environment, you can totally do it. But what Jest Puppeteer does is it makes the page global variable available and you can just go ahead and do all the same stuff that we just did to scrape Google, to scrape Hacker News, and um, use it to write the tests. So let's do a quick example here. So for those of you that can't see, I know most of you can't see, but for those of you that can't see and haven't used Jest before, you should recognize the format of these tests. Nothing different from any other Jest tests that we've written. All we've done is just install the package, but we have this page variable available here. We can make it go to any website, and we can check anything on that website. This is a lightning talk, so I want to keep these simple. We have two tests. We go to Google, and we make sure that the text Google is on the page. And then uh, we want to make sure the internet isn't down and the AWS is up and running. So we go to status AWS to Amazon.com. We make sure that it displays services operating normally text on the page. And all you have to do is just write just. So unsurprisingly, it does say Google on google.com, and AWS is currently up and running. Same Jest interface. This could be intermingled with other integration tests. This could be intermingled with whatever you're doing in Jest. But as you can see here, and as you can see in the repo, really simple. So the last thing that we'll get into is running Puppeteer serverlessly, specifically in AWS Lambda. There are a number of different ways to do this. I've tried a bunch of them. Uh, people have taken Puppeteer and shoved it in Docker, and that works generally, uh, has some complexities. Um, people have found different methods for taking Puppeteer and shoving it into Lambda, or I think GCP actually supports it pretty well, but has some performance issues depending on what you're doing there. I like this particular library because it makes use of a new capability in AWS Lambda called Layers. If you haven't looked into it yet, check it out. It allows you to take big files or big anything and make it available to your Lambda function. And anyone that's worked with Lambda knows that there are some hard, hard limits on the size of your Lambda function. And this really opens up the door to using larger binaries in accordance with your small, nimble Lambda functions that you want to run quickly and hopefully for a short period of time. Unless you want your 
AWS Build Skyrocket. So let's take a look at what that looks like. It's a tad more verbose than the other things that we've looked at today. So I highly recommend if you're interested, check out the Git repo. Has anyone used serverless before? Serverless.com framework? Wow, okay. So I don't like manually zipping up my Lambda functions and uploading them to S3 and going through all that. So there's a number of different ways to do it. My favorite is serverless.com. Don't work for them, I just like them. Uh, would highly recommend it if you work in Lambda, if you are managing a number of Lambda functions or other AWS resources that they work with. But at a super, super, super high level, um, serverless provides a YAML file where you can just describe the provider, the runtime, any plugins you might be using, any layers you might be using, and then what the functions are that you want to deploy. And then you just write your handler file. So you're going to see some boilerplate here. This is just AWS Lambda boilerplate. But otherwise, we're really doing the same thing that we were doing in the previous examples. We're launching Puppeteer. We have to pass it some other flags to make it work within the environment that it's working in. You see those here. We're making a new page. And then here, we're going to do the really, really simple thing. And we are just going to take a screenshot. We're going to send the binary data, that screenshot, back to the browser so you can see what that looked like. The cool thing it will be is that it's not running on the online machine, it's running out on the cloud. The way you get your serverless code up is you just run serverless deploy in the command line. A bunch of stuff happens. This actually takes a little while, so I'm not going to put you through it. I deployed this earlier. This is the endpoint. One of the great things that serverless does for you is all you have to do is let it know in the YAML file that you would like a path, whether it's going to be a get, a post, whatever. It'll take care of generating just about everything for you. It just spits out the path that you needed. So we're going to grab this path. The way this Lambda function works is that we give it an address to go to and take a screenshot of. So we'll start with Google, take a screenshot of that. It takes a little bit. There we go. Um, any other websites we want to screenshot? Favorite site? What's on Reddit? OK. That's like a dangerous game. <laughs> Oof, I got nervous there for a second. That's what's on Reddit right now. So obviously, simple example, nothing that exciting about taking a screenshot. But the message that I really want to put out there is that any more complex scenario that you can think of running on a controlled Chrome instance, you can pretty easily and pretty quickly run a Lambda function, AWS, or whatever cloud computing provider that you personally like. All right, so um, that's, uh, that's what I got. This was a lightning talk. Um, there is a link here. I've made all the examples available. Uh, if anyone is curious about Puppeteer, and let's chat about it or how to use it. Happy to talk to you after your right point. And uh, I know I went fast, but happy to field some questions.